Welcome to Read Aloud with Mr. Paul. I'm so glad you could be here. Be sure to subscribe so you won't miss a single story. Today we'll be reading The Story of Little Samba and the Tigers. Retold in Classic Bedtime Stories. Illustrated by Scott Gustafson. The Story of Little Samba and the Tigers. Once upon a time, there was a young boy, and his name was Little Samba. And his mother was called Mata, and his father was called Bapa. One day, Mata made him a beautiful little red coat and a pair of beautiful little blue trousers. And Bapa went to the bazaar and bought him a beautiful green umbrella and a lovely little pair of purple shoes with crimson soles and crimson linings. And then wasn't little Samba grand? So he put on all his fine clothes and went out for a walk in the jungle. By and by, he met a tiger, and the tiger said to him, Little Samba, I'm going to eat you up. And Little Samba said, Oh, please, Mr. Tiger, don't eat me up, and I'll give you my beautiful little red coat. So the tiger said, Very well. I won't eat you this time, but you must give me your beautiful little red coat. So the tiger got poor little Samba's beautiful little red coat and went away, saying, Now I'm the grandest tiger in the jungle. And little Samba walked on, and by and by he met another tiger, and he said to him, Little Samba, I'm going to eat you up. And little Samba said, Oh, please, Mr. Tiger, don't eat me up, and I'll give you my beautiful little blue trousers. So the tiger got poor little Samba's beautiful little blue trousers and went away, saying, Now I'm the grandest tiger in the jungle. And little Samba went on, and by and by he met another tiger. And it said to him, Little Samba, I'm going to eat you up. And Little Samba said, Oh, please, Mr. Tiger, don't eat me up, and I'll give you my beautiful little purple shoes with crimson soles and crimson linings. But the tiger said, What use would your shoes be to me? I have four feet and you have only two. You haven't got enough shoes for me. But little Samba said, You could wear them on your ears. So I could, said the tiger. That's a very good idea. Give them to me, and I won't eat you this time. So the tiger got poor little Samba's beautiful little purple shoes with crimson soles and crimson linings and went away, saying, Now I'm the grandest tiger in the jungle. And by and by, Little Samba met another tiger, and he said to him, Little Samba, I'm going to eat you up. <laughs> and Little Samba said, Oh, please, Mr. Tiger, don't eat me up, and I'll give you my beautiful green umbrella. But the tiger said, How can I carry an umbrella when I need all my paws for walking? You could tie a knot on your tail and carry it that way, said Little Samba. So I could, said the tiger. Give it to me, and I won't eat you this time. So the tiger got poor Little Samba's beautiful green umbrella and went away, saying, Now I'm the grandest tiger in the jungle. And little Samba went away crying, because the cruel tigers had taken all his fine clothes. Presently, he heard a horrible noise that sounded like, Grrr! And it got louder and louder. Oh dear, said little Samba. That must be all the tigers coming back to eat me up. What shall I do? 
He ran quickly to a palm tree and peeped around it to see what the matter was. There he saw all the tigers arguing and disputing which of them was the grandest. At last, they all got so angry that they knew the only way to settle the argument was to fight. They took off all the fine clothes, so as not to ruin them, and began to tear each other with their claws and bite each other with their great big white teeth. And they came rolling and tumbling right to the foot of the very tree where little Samba was hiding. But he jumped quickly to hide behind the umbrella. The tigers all caught hold of each other's tails as they wrangled and scrambled. And so they found themselves in a ring round the tree. Then, while the tigers were wrangling and scrambling, little Samba jumped up and called out, Oh, tigers! Why have you taken off all your nice clothes? Don't you want them anymore? But the tigers only answered, <sighs> Then little Samba said, If you want them, say so, or else I'll take them away. But the tigers would not let go of each other's tails, and so they could only say, <sighs> So little Samba put all his fine clothes on again and walked off. The tigers were very, very angry, but still they would not let go of each other's tails. They were so angry that they ran around the tree trying to eat each other up. And they ran faster and faster until they were whirling around so fast you couldn't see their legs at all. And they still ran faster and faster and faster until they all just melted away. And there was nothing left but a great big pool of melted butter, or ghee as it is called in India, around the base of the tree. Now, Bapa was just coming home from his work with a great big brass pot in his arms, and when he saw what was left of all the tigers, he said, Oh, what lovely melted butter! I'll take that home to Mata for her to use in cooking. So he put it all into the great big brass pot and took it home to Mata to cook with. When Mata saw the melted butter, wasn't she pleased? Now we'll all have pancakes for supper, she said. So she got flour and eggs and milk and sugar and butter, and she made a huge big plate of the loveliest pancakes. She fried them in the melted butter that the tigers had made, and they were just as yellow and brown as little tigers. And then they all sat down to supper, and Mata ate 27 pancakes. And Bapa ate fifty-five, and little Samba ate a hundred and sixty-nine, because he was so hungry. Thank you so much for joining me for Read Aloud with Mr. Paul. Until next time, discover the wonder in a book. Pick one up. Take a look. For more classic stories, like and subscribe to Read Aloud with Mr. Paul. Thanks again.